Just slightly on the yellow. Oh, that's a good shot. What Lost a snooker. 18. Almost. Well done, Russ. He's well, unlucky there. He's got to be careful he doesn't knock the yellow over the green pocket. Well, he's going for the screw with side. That's a good shot. I mean, this is where Tony's experience will come in, won't it? The fact that uh, he knows his way around the snooker table. I mean, Manjin Ross at the moment is just a potter and brake builder. You can learn the rest. Well, this will test Tony's queuing. Can he pot this yellow and get back for the green? Oh, what a shot. So, well, that was a good shot, well in, well. didn't he? Yeah. Look at the way he pushed Just that cue through. <laughs> so straight. Always used a very small cue, you know, Tony knows. For his height, it was quite yeah. small. It's a good shot on the green, and he's coming back up the table for the brown. Five. That's good. Yeah, t 12 points ahead, just brown and blue needed. Oh, he's fluked it. He's fluked it. Oh, no. I can't believe it. Ross. You know, after all never these lose. years, John, he's <laughs> still as lucky as ever. You never lose it, do you? <laughs> Well, it looks as though that fluke on 14. the brown has won it in. 21 in front, 13 doesn't, remaining. Doesn't even feel guilty. No. Look at that. 20 and... Um... Wants to show well with the black. So oh, Tony knows wins the Super 60s at the Sixes. He beats Ross Muir with a lucky shot on the brown. <laughs> Both guys have done well, but let's be honest about what a fluke Tony Rowe <laughs> Tony Rawford. He's playing better now than he was when he was on the main tour. Well done, Tony. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tony. Thank you. you can't really see the best of somebody over a six red, one frame event, but uh, you, you can see when he sort of like got relaxed there and uh, he started to pot a few balls, he, you can see that they're good players and they don't make 140 breaks if they're not a good player, you know. <laughs> I was concentrating that much on the game. I wasn't aware of anything going on around me. Tony Knowles is obviously a great player, but I think he got a fair bit of luck there. Uh, any views, opinions, thoughts on Snooker Super Sixes, uh, you can email us to snooker at bbc.co.uk. Um, Ken, you've played in a Super Sixes tournament <laughs> yeah. in Thailand. What do you make of it? I think it's a fantastic concept. I think any of the lads that travelled over there to play in it really loved the tournament. Uh, it's fast, it's furious. Uh, what They were also running a maximum competition, like the maximum now is 75. But it wasn't who made a maximum, it was who made the fastest maximum. And they were running a, a sort of competition within a competition every day. And then, of course, the fastest maximum over the week, which was a great idea as well. So it was, it was really went down a storm and, and we're going over there again this year to play it again. Yeah, it's early days, but we were discussing this a few days ago. Do you stand by what was said that you need to change a few rules to make it... It needs to be different from snooker we know here at the Crucible. Yeah, yeah um, Steve threw a few ideas and, and you actually came up with one which people should know about because you said off the break off which I thought was a really good idea you should hit two cushions off the break mm. just stops people playing the negative one where they drop into it but Steve come up with some interesting points you know maybe you can put the, pick the cue ball, or, cue ball up put it in hand anywhere you like on the table if there's a foul and things like that it needs looking at yeah. um, but it's, it's certainly got prospects. Ken, do you think you need to get on with it? This is the whole idea of Super Sixes would be to try and speed it up in some way to attract a younger generation, not to, to make it... It's like snooker, but not exactly yeah, the same, because otherwise, just stick with the game as it is now. Well, I think it's a great idea for kids, if they're going into a snooker club, that they can play a game uh, with six reds, and it's over very quickly. Mm. You know, particularly if you're starting off, right, because you play with 15 reds starting off, it could, you know, it could take an hour. Whereas you could play a few games with, with a, a six reds, and it's, it's, it's much better, I think, for kids starting off. It's a great idea. 
do we think it's going to have a future? Because I'd quite like to the idea of seeing O'Sullivan, Selby, all the top guys, the top 16, playing a, a Super Sixes tournament just to see what pace you could get out of it, just to see whether there's an appetite from the public for it. I think so. I think it's worth a shot at. I don't think you can have it as a ranking event. I just, no. you know, I don't think it's no, no, no. really fair to have it as a ranking event, but it might stand up on a, as a tournament on its own. Yeah, and well played Ross Muir. Give Tony yeah, a good yeah. old go. He was mean. so lucky, that yeah. Tony knows. <laughs> yeah, nice to see oh, him. Not even guilty at all. It's ah, terrible. Great, great to see him. Grinning like a Cheshire cat as well. <laughs> OK, let's go over to the Players' Lounge. Rishi's there. Well, today is a big day, not just for John Higgins and Sean Murphy, but also for referee Michaela Tabb, who comes the first woman to referee a final here at the Crucible. And I'm joined by her husband, Ross, and her son, Morgan. Morgan, first of all, what was your mum like this morning? Was she all nervous? Well, yeah, she was actually really nervous. Well, she, when we got up, like, we went down, got breakfast, and then she was in her room for about an hour or two. Did you help calm her nerves? No, not really. I wasn't allowed to even go in her room. I'd, she had to just do it herself. How proud of you, uh, of her are you? I am really proud. Like first female referee to do the world championship final. Really proud. Uh, Ross, what, what about you? I mean, we know that uh, you're a, a champion as well at pool, world champion. A long uh, time ago, yes. It was a long time ago, but still, I mean, it's it's a massive thing for Michaela. Oh yeah, it's fantastic for her. I mean. She keeps on, everybody keeps on saying it's the first female, but uh, it's her first final. She said that it's her first World Championship final, and that's what people, she wants to be able to remember. What's it like at home? Do you guys just talk about pool and snooker and play on, on the tables at home? Well, at home I've got two boys to look after. Uh, the only time you ever see Michaela is if we come down to a snooker competition or a pool competition. She's never home, she's always away. Are you, do you play much pool or snooker? No, not really. Um... Why not? You got your mum's a referee. Your dad's a champion. Well, mum's all the wee time, all the time. And then if we went to play pool, we'd have to take the wee man, the wee my wee brother. The wee man. Where is the wee man then? Uh, the wee man's back in the hotel with my mum. She's looking after him. He's only three. Okay. Do you have a personal favourite for who might win win this uh, final? Well, I'm a Glaswegian and I support Celtic, so I think uh, Sean Murphy. I would like Sean Murphy to win. Okay. <laughs> what about you, Morgan? John Higgins. <laughs> Listen. Thank you both for talking to us, and I hope you really enjoyed the final. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Rishi. Well done, Michaela. Uh, now, time to continue a series which features the people of Sheffield who have really embraced the World Snooker Championship here in Sheffield for the 30-plus years it's been held here. Today, it's the highly respected boxing trainer, Brendan Ingle. <laughs> 